Hello, it's uh, David Taylor and I'm finally back with another video blog, so let's get going. Hi, well it's uh, very good to be back with you again. Um, I have to apologise really because I've just been so busy lately doing a lot of things. I haven't done a video for probably over a month now, so I do apologise for that. Because I did say originally I was going to do uh, a lot more videos once I get this new greenhouse established. But unfortunately I've just been so busy, My main, the main project that I'm actually doing is redeveloping, helping redevelop the, uh, the PAGS, the Pelagonium Geranium Society website. And that's taken up an awful lot of time, as perhaps you could imagine. Um, so that's why I've perhaps not been doing quite as much as I would normally do. I'm back today, it's the end of, towards the end of October now. I'm filming this on the 25th, I think. Uh, two months to Christmas, there's a good reminder for you. Today we'll just try and catch up on a few things. I'm obviously now clearly getting well into the autumn period. So we'll have a little look around at some of my plants, some of the jobs that I've been up to, some of the things that you, of course, could be doing uh, just keeping your plants clean. That's the main thing really at this time of year. So let's just have a little look. Now one of the key things that we have to do is keep our plants constantly clean. I mean the main thing to do is have a look in particularly sort of relatively tight plants like this and just have a look through the middle. Um, you know, pull the leaves back, see if there's any sort of dead or dying leaves and they need to come out straight away because what will happen is you'll get one that will just start to turn and it will just knock onto a stem, it will just begin to die back onto a stem and then it will pass that rot into a stem and then you'll have all sorts of problems, it will start spreading around in the damp which of course in the UK we get very damp conditions in the autumn. Uh, and here's one here, uh, this is a plant of mini check. It, it's almost a sort, of a, a sort of a cross hybrid, quite an old variety now, but I really do love these almost stellar type filament petals that the, lead, that the uh, blooms have on a, what you would call a sort of dark miniature to dwarf type body plant. And I actually really like this plant. It does tend to come better in the later summer, I find. Uh, but the thing is, a lot of these blooms are beginning to die back. And here's a good example of a, of a sort of dying bloom. We can clearly see this. This is really beginning to die back. And what will happen is, you see, as that fades and it begins to rub on the leaves, it'll cause all those to rot and it can cause chaos. So as soon as you get bloom heads that are dying back, they've got to come off. And I'm, I'm just going to sort of quickly run through this plant. It's not, it's not too bad. I mean, the key thing as well, I'm only watering now about once a week. And because of the cooler conditions now, the plants aren't taking up so much water. Um, but this is obviously a fairly sizable plant. I said earlier in the season that I was actually going to think about keeping my plants a bit bigger over this winter, just as a test. Um, and I think it is working because this is just marginally damp. It's dry at the top, but it is damp underneath. This is certainly much happier than it was last year. The, the, the leaves are really good still, really quite strong growing. But we've got a lot of dead and dying leaves which we need to get out. I may keep some of the new ones coming through just as a little bit of a, a sort of show to put on in, the, uh, in, the, in this autumn period. As the days get really much shorter, um, I will probably take all the blooms in the greenhouse out. But um, this year I'm enjoying lots of, uh, lots of these blooms that are still coming through. But it almost certainly is the fact that we've had such mild conditions. We've not had any hard frosts yet. But you can see these dead and dying leaves that are coming underneath. It's very, very important to get rid of all of these. Now the other thing as well, is uh, it's very helpful to remove some of the other leaves which are quite healthy as well because what you want you want air to get around these stems i've said it a number of times so it's very important to do um, you want to strip down these leaves to uh, enable air to really move around the stems to prevent the real key problem which is botrytis and what i'm going to do here is any blooms that are 
open, I'm actually just going to take off, but let the fresh new ones just uh, grow through to make a little uh, winter, sort of early winter display. Now the thing is as well, if you do keep your plants on the dry side, you will get a few yellowing leaves just purely because the plant is quite thirsty and it puts all its energy into that top fresh growth. Uh, and lets the lower leaves sort of die back. So if you keep your plants particularly dry, I mean, it won't harm them uh, to be kept dry during the winter because they're not really transpiring, uh, which is, you know, the whole growth mechanism. Uh, they're not transpiring a great deal in the, uh, in the cooler days and nights. So it's not so much a concern. It won't really harm your plant. Just dribble a little bit of moisture around the edge of the, uh, of the pot so that it just gets down but doesn't really touch the central stems which you're wanting to keep really quite dry because with all of my clay pot plants I water from the top. I don't, use, I don't water from the bottom like I do my sort of uh, plastic show type plants. Um, and that's nice and fresh now. I've got rid of all the dead and dying leaves. I've opened up a, a few, I've taken off a few green ones in the centre of the plant to enable air, air to get round the stems. Uh, and that'll still provide a, a pretty decent display really. I'll plop that back in its place, which was over here. Now I've just seen on this one here, we have got a little bit of botrytis starting to come. This is Vectis Snow, which is one of my favorite Stellas. And I'm just gonna pull them off. And here we are, is the, the, the classic example of botrytis. It's just a sort of gray mold that appears on the leaves. Uh, and that's the classic botrytis. Strip them off, that's the easiest thing to do, just get rid of them plant won't come to any harm. But I love these uh, lovely white blooms. Um, they're almost green white, particularly at this time of year. And talking of sort of colors at uh, this time of year, our colored leaf varieties always look brilliant in the autumn. Now I've got this variegated version of Mr. Wren here, and this has got quite a few dead and dying leaves on it. So I'm just gonna strip these off. Um, it's important as well to get dead and dying stipules um, off of the plant. That's really very important as well because if you get a particularly rotten stipule with the damp, that can begin to really penetrate the stem. So it's vital that you get really badly rotten stipules off as well. Uh, but this is a, quite an open plant, so I don't think it's going to be a, a, a big issue. Very long jointed Mr. Wren. Um, let me get rid of some of these. This was actually two plants that I'm actually trying to train up. A little weed in there. But it, it's growing okay. I will probably cap that, but I won't do it now. When I say cap, I mean just stop it at the edges to be able to bush out but I'll probably wait until the spring now to do that. Because one of the problems with variegated leaf plants is that they don't grow. Once we start getting much cooler conditions as the winter hits, these will really slow up. Uh, and I find that colored leaf varieties, bicolors and tricolors, which I'll show you in a moment, they really do like to be kept really quite dry during the, uh, the winter. Conversely, in the summer, I find that they like to be kept a bit wetter, uh, strangely, but in the winter, they like to be kept very dry. I generally keep my, ground out, my greenhouse at most about six degrees, which will mean in certain parts of it, it'll go down to about three or four, mostly where the regals are, because they actually prefer it a bit cooler. Uh, but bicolors and tricolors really could do with something a bit warmer. They would ideally like to be no lower than about seven or eight degrees in the winter. So um, it, it's always a balancing act when you're growing all the types of pelagoniums that there are. Now something that has grown on are a number of these young standards that I've really got going this year. And what I've been doing, as you've seen me demonstrate in the past, is I've been straightening up the stems. Now this is a, a plant of Vectis Snow, which I just showed you down there. Uh, and this was bent over a bit, and I, it's just literally a loose stick um, tied at the base, and then bringing up the top of the plant to straighten it up. 
I'll put a link to a video I've done showing that in the past, so put it up there if you really want to know the exact details. Another Stella, this is a gold leaf variety called Vivienne, which I got hold of in the summer, and I'm doing a, a few standards of this as well. Uh, quite like the idea of doing a gold leaf standard, not done one before. But we can see here that in this one, I tied the stick at the sort of towards the base and pulled up the top part just to straighten it. And that's what we're always trying to do. We don't need to put a, a big stick in at the moment. The key is getting the main stem straight. And then when this gets potted up again, uh, we can start to think about, you know, straightening it and putting a main stick down through. So I'm going to have a greenhouse full of standards next year, which I'm actually really looking forward to. I love growing them. I don't know what it is about standards. Uh, it's actually now pouring down with rain, so hopefully you can still hear me with the rain. We're, going, we're having a bit of a storm that's going through. Now, as I've said, the key thing, you can enjoy blooms. I've got a number of these young Shrivenham stars that are blooming away quite nicely, actually. These are looking very good plants, very young. But the key, you really must to enjoy these, as soon as they begin to go over, you've got to get rid of them. But these are as clean as a whistle at the moment. So I can let these flower and just enjoy them. They're, they're not going to be used for show for a couple of years. Now, talking of shows, um, annual show next year, scheduled for the Pelagonium and Geranium Society, is scheduled for Saturday the 19th of June at Fibrex Nursery near Stratford-upon-Avon in the village of Pebworth. With the COVID situation, still a few minor question marks by then, but it, we hope that it's going to go ahead. Uh, we have to plan because we have to get the situation in place. Fibrex are actually going to have a whole weekend fence festival once again, but the show will only be on one day, which is Saturday the 19th. Any uh, exhibitors wishing to hang on to the second day, will, the marquee will remain open on the second day and we will have just a, a festival of the uh, plants that will be remaining on the Sunday the 20th. Okay, so we'll just have a little look round. Up here are some of my large, this is up the door end, some of my large growing uh, pot plants which would normally live outside during the uh, summer. And this is the typical colouring um, of the coloured leaf varieties. Gold leaves always look glorious during the um, the autumn period. Uh, then we got a gold tricolour, Sophie Dumaresque. I uh, love this plant, really grows strongly. And Miss Bernadette Coots, the gorgeous uh, tricolour here, uh, cream tricolour. I mean the reds, what I like in the autumn is that the reds really come out in the leaves. I really hope you can hear me above this storm that's bashing on the uh, greenhouse now. Um, but yeah, that's the thing that I absolutely love about the coloured leaf varieties in the autumn. They're quite happy, but again, any rotten leaves or blooms, get them off straight away. The variegated Mr. Wren I've already shown you, but that's still throwing a few, a few flowers. A scented Lavender Lindy here has actually grown really well this autumn. I repotted it. Um, because my wife particularly likes this one and it's absolutely trebled in size in just probably no more than a month and a half. Done very well, just about to throw a little bit of bloom. Now my regals, as I've already said, um, look very good. They actually grow very well in the cooler weather. Uh, they enjoy the cooler weather and I'm so pleased that these have really grown on strongly since I give them a, a slight cut back in the late summer. Up here I've got some cuttings, these are all young regal cuttings. This is, because the, the big heater is up here, this is very much the coolest part of the greenhouse at the back here because they're not getting a great deal of heat on them. But they're more than happy with that, regals of course. One of the things that you'll probably note, if we look over there, I have actually got a lot of room. Um, and the key thing to note, of course, is that the plants are at their smallest now. And in the spring, they're going to double and treble in size, ready for the shows. So you need to have a lot of room, really, in your greenhouse at this time of year. Now, underneath, got some large plants. These are large plants that I would keep outside during the summer. They're all now tucked away. I keep going in and taking off a number of the leaves uh, just to thin them out a bit. A plant that has gone crazy is this dragon's breath. 
It's done, gone absolutely mental. I actually potted this up at the end of the summer and it's doubled or even trebled in size. It's gone mad. But that's going to be, a, I'm hopeful of getting that to be a really huge plant by next summer. That's in a 10 inch pot, I think, currently clay 10 inch pot. And there's a classic example of a plant that I've just really opened up this morning. I had a few dead and dying leaves in there, so I really did strip that one back. Uh, it's a larger growing dwarf in a six inch pot, Floribunda. But that's the sort of thing that you need to do. It won't harm the plant at all. Just make sure it's a little bit, you don't overwater it. And that's the key thing to looking after them during the autumn and winter. And this is the autumn. Hailstones. <laughs> Hailstones hitting the green elf. Um, I certainly chose a good time to film this, didn't I? That's all very, very interesting. Okay, so that's just about it from me today. I will hopefully get another video out, certainly in the next month, as, the, as we begin to go into the winter period. But in the meantime, look after your plants, and if you've got any comments, uh, just nip them in the uh, comment section underneath the video. And I'll see you again soon. Please subscribe to this channel, and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You can follow Mr. Pelagonium on both Twitter and Instagram under Mr. Pelagonium. And you can follow the Pelagonium and Geranium Society on Facebook. Or you can visit the PAGS website at thepags.org.uk.